many times we have people that are um, educated elites that are telling uh, the black community or just people in general, like how they should live their lives and they're not living their lives that way. Right. We're like, mm -hmm. you know, they're telling people to, yeah, let, let's, let's do free love and everybody should have everything they want, but like, they're not raising their kids like that. They're raising their kids more discipline and more structure, but they want all the pores to just be like chaotic, uh, mm -hmm. no structure, just excuses for all the problems. And it's like, that doesn't, that, those are not, those are not real life solutions. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how many likes you get on Twitter or how many retweets you get on Twitter. That's not going to change your circumstances unless you're willing to put in the work yourself. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the, the, the internet is the great equalizer. And if you're still struggling right now and you're not doing anything to change it, like nobody cares. I don't care how mm. many black squares they put up on Twitter. I don't care how many fists they put up outside. Mm. People are going to look at you like you're nuts if they don't see you doing any effort to make anything, any change in your life. And if you're just saying, you know, well, I'm living in a white supremacist society and every day I'm struggling to make it like they'll nod their head. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, like they don't give a fuck. Like people, Man. people will listen to you, do your spiel and they'll just say to you, OK, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll want to tell their little spiel about why they're not Man. successful. And after that, you guys leave, and then you guys accomplish nothing. Mm. Okay, so so I have a little story. Um, I was about 22 years old, right? And um, mm -hmm. I was in prison, and I had a celly, and uh, he was a pimp from uh, Seattle. And you know, when you when you're in the pen, a lot of times you're gonna tell stories to each other, your cellmates. You're gonna tell your whole life story about how you got there, and all the hardships, and everybody just trades these war stories about. The girls you've been with and how high school was and all the s page you done did you know war stories forever right mm -hmm. and so uh i did my normal little spiel and tell my celly about my life and he just asked me he said something to me i was like absolutely nuts he said uh how old are you and i told him oh i'm 22 and he says oh yeah he said you know what nobody gives a fuck bro Ooh. All, all the shit you're telling me nobody gives a fuck fam like all this shit is meaningless you're grown now i don't nobody cares about how your how your dad did you how, how your mom mistreated you all that shit mm. doesn't matter now you know what i'm saying you're fucking grown nobody cares and like people may people may listen to you but they're only gonna listen to you as much as you're listening to them and then once you're mm. gone once you're not listening no more they don't give a fuck and they only like you for where you are right now right this is all just fun and games laughing ha ha he he but if someone needs you to help if you need help right now like a doctor or you need five hundred dollars for your baby mom they wouldn't be there for you so knock that shit off man stop stop leaning back on your trauma as some kind of like badge of honor or an excuse for why you're not successful because honestly nobody gives a fuck and then mm -hmm. i sat back and i was like i was angry but then, like, there was no flaws in the logic for me to go back and, like, want to be mad about it, right? So I had to sit back and just, just kind of see they're in it. And, but really, that really was a changing point in my life because I realized nobody's going to come save me, right? No one's going to come be there for me but me. Like, I got to want it for myself. So it doesn't matter all the things I was taught as a kid. I had to change my whole entire mindset. So after that, I started, like, writing myself letters writing myself like a whole bunch of letters right and so because i didn't i always heard that you know people are going to forget that feeling they had when they're in the pen like the, the amount of despair they had the amount of like anxiety the amount of like just wanting to be free right and so they said what you need to do is you need to focus on those feelings and write them down so if you ever feel like you're in a position where you want to fuck up again or you want to uh make mistakes or you're feeling down, being depressed, you will never be as low as you were as when you were in the pen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you like a refresher because the human mind is so easy for you to adjust, right? So like even me, I was a, I was 18 years old, I went to prison. I was a square. I had never really committed a crime before. It's the first time I ever, I ever did anything in my life as far as being involved with the police. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, about after you're about in prison for about a year and a half it becomes normal your body gets into a routine your mind gets into a routine it's you watch football and then you watch basketball then it's the summer then you repeat and you see that over and over again so you might ask yourself like how does someone do 
like eight years, just one day at a time. And mm. there'll, be, there'll be some days when it's easy. There'll be some days when it's difficult. But at the end of the day, it's, it's still 24 hours. It's going to happen whether you want it to or not. It's going to pass. Mm -hmm. And if you want it to happen harder, it's not going to go any faster. So just kind of get in a routine. And so after hearing that that speech, it kind of made me think like, OK, I got to change my mindset because there are going to be so many people out here that are going to bullshit you. They're going to lie mm -hmm. to you. They're, they're going to they're going to feed into your uh, narcissistic habits because they want you to do the same thing for them. So you got to want it for yourself. And so that's why, like, now um, I listen to a lot of, like, Jordan Peterson. I listen to other, like, you know, motivational speakers. And they say, like, once you reach a certain level of success, you don't got to be Beamer, Benz, or Bentley. But once you reach a certain level of success, it's your job to go back and give back to the people that are in the same circumstances you were at. That's the part of the hero's journey is once you, once you cast the ring into – Mount Doom, you got to come back to the Shire and let the young people know the mistakes you made, but also how you overcame things. I hear so much. I hear so much about the struggle and the strife. But what about those who are overcoming the struggle every single day? We got to start championing that shit way more because people, I feel like what they're doing is they're doing a disservice because only a few, a few people can hear like, you know, we're living in a white premises society and everybody's racist. And take that and say, you know what? Okay, now I want to fight against that. I'm going to champion my people. But a lot of people are saying, well, if that's the case, then what's the point of doing anything? Who? I mean, what's the point of life? If, if, it's, if the country's still racist as it was since Jim Crow, then what does it matter what I do? I'm never going to get ahead. And then why not sell dope? Why not try to hit, shoot those shoot the moon and, and try to hit a lick real quick and become a kingpin? Because obviously being a square doesn't work. You're telling me right now that, you know, working a nine to five doesn't work. So I might have to try to be a drug kingpin. You know what I'm saying? I might try to hit the lottery. And so I think a lot of people think they're doing people a, a, a service because they feel subconscious because they are successful in this white supremacist society, right? In America. So now they want to still prove that they're black. So they'll tell people that are, you know, struggling that, you know, it's okay. Like, yeah, I made it, but I'm special. It's like, realistically, you're not special. Mm -hmm. You're normal. And we can't normalize success. Stop that. Because that shit mm. is that shit is negative and that shit is toxic. Stop acting like you going to college is something spectacular. It's not. You know what I'm saying? It's normal. Anybody else can do it if, with enough mm. effort put into it. You know what I'm saying? It's what do you want to sacrifice? I keep hearing about, Man. I keep hearing about, you know, the Asian community and they're, they're, they're white passing all this other shit but you don't ever hear stories about Asian immigrant families sacrificing meals so their kids can go to uh, test practice preps so they can get their SATs higher you don't hear about that shit everybody wants to hear about the light but no one wants to hear about the struggle and I want to hear more people overcoming the struggle